Hello, this is Rochelle Gap, and this is your lecture on if statements for Accounting 104. Please note, as always, if your assignment PDF looks different than the lecture, you always follow your PDF assignment inside Blackboard because I do change things up inside the PDFs uh, more often than the lectures. So we're going to talk about an if statement. An if statement is a powerful Excel uh, tool, wizard, that is going to look for a condition and return a value. So it's a logical function. The way Excel does it is when you open it up with your equals if, it says the first thing it sees, the condition value, is the true one. Otherwise, it's the false one. So if condition is the value that you want to test. The value true is what you want to return if the condition equates to true. And the false is what you would return if it's false. Now, if statements um, can be complicated and they can be really tricky if you're using them really nested, which we're going to go through in our assignment. But just to look at a simple one, I created just a simple little summary of boys and girls. So I listed the people out, Jim's a boy, Penny's a girl, etc. So the way I write the if statement, I'm going to click up here and notice, I start it with the equals if. And then remember, what I'm doing is if the condition is true, it will result the truth. So if I'm saying if the condition is a boy, it's going to put a B. Otherwise, it's going to put a G. Now, notice I have the little quotes. When you use text inside of an if statement, you have to quote it. If you're using references to cells, you'll see in a moment you don't. So inside this one, let's look down. It's looking at this cell in cell B13. It's saying if B13 says boy, put a B, otherwise put a G. So notice it has a B. And all I did was I just copied that on down. Keeping in mind, I didn't need to absolute anything because I wanted it to move with my cell reference. So everywhere there wasn't a boy, it put, it put a G. Now let's just get rid of this girl right here. Notice it still put a G because the if statement is saying if it's not boy, it's, it by default is a girl. So this is where if statements can have issues because it, it's making an assumption based on what you write. So this is a very simple if statement. I could write um, dog and it's still going to put a G because it's not a boy. Okay, so let's look down at something a little bit more complicated. This is called a nested if statement where I'm nesting looking for things in a table, which is what you're going to do in your homework. Here I have um, my if statement, and let's take a minute to look at it. I'm saying if the sales column, so I'm referring to the sales column, and then I'm going to refer to a table. I'm going to say if, if B34, my first company's sales, is greater than, um, if B24 is greater than B34 down here, I want it to say what I put over in the table. So. What I'm really getting at is that people who earn 20000 or more are superstars. People who earn or companies that earn 15000 between 15 and 20 are looking good. Pe the companies that earn between 10 and 15 are meeting the minimum, and if you're under that, you better find a new job. So notice the words just pop right in there. And this time you don't see any quotes up in the formula bar because I'm referring to cell references. So in this one, I'm looking at B24, I'm coming down to the table, and I'm saying, does it first meet the superstar? And if not, then I move down to the next one. If you write this nested if incorrectly, it will result in a wrong um, false. And what I mean by that is if you had started out and you had asked it if it was greater than 10,000, then it wouldn't know where to go because I have lots of different levels here. So this is the, the dynamic of the if statement is it's how you write it and knowing what you're trying to achieve. And they're, they're super powerful, and I've seen really, really intricate if statements. So the point of this one is, and this will be inside your assignments, you can check it out, is if you're going to nest your if, lay your data out properly and make sure you understand what it is you're trying to do. So I copied this down. Notice I absoluted these down here, these cell references, because I don't want them to move when I copy it down. So you can see when I built it, I can just copy it down. And I absoluted things properly to get it to work. So let's look at like one of these. Let's say find the new job. 
here you have 3,500 and it's definitely not 10,000 or greater. So it defaulted to find a new job. So if I picked any of these, let's change this 3,900 and let's make it 14,999. Notice now it says it's meeting the minimum because it didn't get to 15,000. If I put that to 15,000, let's go 1501, then it's looking good. So it, you, you should test your if statements after you write them and make sure that it's doing what you want it to do. So in summary, simple if, nested if. The other one I want you to go through is, and this, this one is complicated, but it will show you, it'll force you to make mistakes in your if statements, and I want you to do that. So I created like kids and ages, and I say, if you're in grade four through five, you're gonna be a kindergartner. Five through six is a first grader, six through seven is a second grader, etc. Okay, so let's look at how I actually did that. So the first if statement's really simple. It says, look at the age, and if the age equals the lowest grade for a kindergartner, make it a kindergartner. Otherwise, it's all false. So you start out and you can write that if statement one time to get it to default what you wanted to do. So in this table, there's only one four-year-old and they're going to be in kindergarten. Notice that if you're five, you go to kindergarten two, but this if statement didn't find that. So my second if statement is searching for that. It's saying if C13 is less than the highest grade of a kindergartner, then it's a kindergartner. So this one actually found all the people that should go to kindergarten, the four and the fives, but it also pulled a three-year-old in that shouldn't even go to kindergarten. So I know this is really a lot to look at, and that's why I'm going to force you to do this example to get down all the mistakes you can make in an if statement. The third one says, okay, well, let's find that third grader, that three-year-old, and make sure they don't go to kindergarten. So this one's saying if the age is less than the minimum, then it's NA, so they can't go to school. But if they're less than the low end and less than the high end, then they can. So this one actually pulled the NA and the kindergartners. Notice I'm not even dealing with anyone who's older than that. Okay, now I'm going to go into first grade. I'm going to say now I want to make sure I can find my first graders. So in this one, I've added another row. I'm saying, okay, I left my first if statement. Now I'm adding another. Notice every time I nest, I open another if. So now I'm saying if C13 is less than M14, um, then they go to first grade, otherwise false. So I've captured my preschoolers. They don't go to school. I've captured my kindergartners, and now I've got my first graders. So when you look at this, I got my first and my kindergartners, and so on. So you can see by the time I get to my final if statement, it's capturing everybody where they need to go. However, I still got a couple of problems. I got my middle school. I've got my, um, my people that go to third grade. And then what about those people that are um, 7 to 11? So here's my 11-year-old, and I've got him going to fourth grade. Got my 10 going to fourth grade. Um, so just see, as you build it, I want you to struggle a little bit with this one, to try it, try all the columns. Down here, I kind of explained to you what the different examples are and what I want you to do, and try it. Once you get that all tried out, you're going to actually go to your assignment. So here is your assignment. It'll be in the PDF. The first part is doing what I just showed you, the grade, looking at the, um, the grade and filling this out. Okay, it's called Lecture 2. Part 2 is building on this Hilo staffing summary. So you're going to have a bunch of people with titles and you have a staffing chart with titles and what they make. Notice that 
I use little references here so that you could if statement off the type, not off the name, because the, the more the if statement has to look at, the, the le better chance there is of an error. So you're going to actually build an if statement that's going to pull that rate in. I give you the hours in part, um, so that's part two, is building, building this as you see it. And then part two is pulling the, part three is pulling the rate in. Part four, you're going to take these hours and put them in the hour part and do some calculation, which is really simple. It doesn't have anything to do with the if statement. And then the fifth part, you're going to create a fifth, um, a, a fourth sheet, and you're going to just in do some increasing with math just to remember how to do that kind of stuff. The key to this is um, being efficient, copying um, the worksheets over when I tell you to. I want your colors to look just like mine, the green, the pink. I want your formatting to look good. I'm really being more picky on how I um, grade these things. So summary, this will be inside your file so you can check it out. You're going to complete the lecture two and then you're going to start on assignment three. And then when you're all done, you're going to have five sheets. So send me an email if you have any questions. Thanks.